Rocket Lab's first successful booster catch and release. We've all seen SpaceX and their success in reusing their rockets by implementing a landing mechanism for them. This has been lauded as a breakthrough in the space industry. However, a small company has shocked the world with a better and more efficient recovery method. Today we'll be talking about how a relatively new company, Rocket Lab, has successfully experimented with a new method of rocket and booster retrieval, which might be better than the SpaceX method. How did they manage it? Is it better than the SpaceX method? Well, stick around till the end as we answer these questions and more as we delve deeper into the science behind the method. Without further ado, let's begin the video. It all started when recently, the largely unknown Rocket Lab, which is a small company that operates a small rocket, managed to complete the first part of its plan of catching a rocket. Yes, you heard that right. They managed to catch it right out of the air. That might seem impossible, but when you understand the dynamics and the extraordinary engineering behind the concept, you'll understand it. It is truly an ingenious method, and the fact that a small company managed to pull it off, even if it was just the first part of it, is astounding. It all started when the company sent a small payload of a total of 34 small satellites into orbit. When the payload was delivered, the company managed to catch the 39-foot-long booster of the used rocket with the help of a helicopter. This was successfully done, and the catch was completed before the booster splashed into the Pacific Ocean. This method is pretty hard to achieve and will lead further research and experiments to see it implemented in big-name companies such as SpaceX and NASA. We still have a long way to go, but the future is looking bright for the new concept. Now, you all must be wondering, how did a small company like Rocket Lab manage to pull it off? And what is the engineering behind the new concept? Before we get into the engineering of the rocket, first, let's shed some light on the new company to understand the absurdity of how they managed to pull off this feat. Rocket Lab is a publicly traded American aerospace company that also offers small satellite launch services through a wholly owned subsidiary in New Zealand. It developed the T suborbital sounding rocket and now operates the Electron Lightweight Orbital Rocket, which provides specialized launches for tiny satellites and CubeSats. Peter Beck created the company in New Zealand in 2006, and the company moved its headquarters to California in 2013. As you can see, the company is pretty much your average, everyday company, nothing too special. However, the real magic occurs within its team, which devised an amazing way to recover their boosters. They do that thanks to a simple yet genius method. This involves a long dangling from a hovering helicopter that would catch the booster, which was dangling from a parachute. Now, this method might seem simple to our listeners, but you have to understand that such a method requires a lot of skill by the pilot handling the helicopter. Special training has to be given to them so that they can successfully catch the booster. Now that you've understood the logic behind the method, let's get into the details. Engineers at Rocket Lab used a set of thrusters that discharge cold gas to orient the booster as it descends, as well as thermal shielding to protect it from high temperatures. Moreover, at a height of around 50 kilometers, the booster detached from the second stage. It then continued to climb before starting to descend at a speed exceeding 5,000 miles per hour. This is where the atmosphere comes into play. Its friction functioned as a brake. The booster's fall slowed to less than twice the speed of sound after liftoff. The drogue, a miniature parachute, was then deployed, increasing the drag. The booster's speed was further slowed with a bigger main parachute. Now, this is where the helicopter is used. It's the trickiest part of the whole operation. The helicopter, a Sikorsky S-92, hovers in the region and catches the booster in mid-flight thanks to a wire with a grappling hook across the line between the drogue and main parachutes. This is made by the fact that the rocket is now lighter than it had been during launch, having used almost all of its propellant, making the catch possible for the helicopter. Pretty, pretty epic day, says Peter Beck, the CEO of Rocket Lab in the aftermath of the event, clearly overjoyed with their progress. He also acknowledged the difficulty and complexity of the situation by stating, the difficulty in capturing a stage is pretty extreme. However, one can only find success in chasing extremes. However, this isn't the end of the road for the small company. They'll be looking to build upon the success and continue to progress. Rocket Lab has high hopes for its new method. They plan to reuse a recovered booster by catching it and then reusing it in the future. Only Elon Musk and SpaceX have been able to do this before, 
and Beck and his company look to replicate their achievement, but with a different method. Speaking of which, why hasn't the company copied SpaceX's method? Their method was tried and tested, so why did they waste resources on a new method? Let's discuss this in depth. So, are you guys enjoying the video? Here comes another challenge. Why did they use a new method when there was already a well-established one in place? What is the point of investing so much in the new method with a huge risk that it might fail? SpaceX ushered in a new era of reusable rockets, landing, and reusing the first stages of its Falcon 9 rockets on a regular basis. Like Rocket Lab's Electron, the Falcon 9's second stage is still discarded, burning up as they re-enter the atmosphere. That being said, the rocket for the Falcon 9 burns many times after it separates from the second stages, slowing it down on its way to a soft landing on a floating platform in the ocean or on land. Thus, its size allows it to afford a landing mechanism on it. On the other hand, since the Electron is considerably a smaller rocket, it must utilize all of the propellants to get the payload into orbit. Propulsive landings such as those used by the Falcon 9 boosters were ruled impossible. Thus, they could not implement SpaceX's method on their Electron rocket due to the massive size difference. Many would just give up at this point, but Rocket Lab didn't quit and devised another decent way they could recycle used boosters, thus saving the company millions. According to their ambitious chief executive officer, Beck, Rocket Lab plans to catch boosters using their new technique in at least half of their missions. Why half, you might ask? Well, some missions will involve two heavy boosters that won't be possible to catch. The others you just have to call off due to human error, such as a miscalculation by the helicopter, etc. The helicopter pilots are instructed to only go through with the plan if they think they can support the weight. If they think that they cannot, they can release the booster into the sea, as they did in the test mission. Safety is the number one priority, folks. Rocket Lab has opened up new doors for the recovery of small payloads, which might be even cheaper than the SpaceX method. It is an exciting time for the Rocket Lab crew, as they have the immense potential now due to this idea. We hope they are successful in it, and soon roll out the strategy as a permanent one for their future space flights. One needs to comprehend the possibilities that are available to him in terms of space travel. He or she shouldn't be bound by the limits of human thinking, thus one should broaden his creativity to create something that can help mankind create even more possibilities. Rocket Lab's new method might create another possibility for the space travel industry, opening even new doors in its wake. So are you excited to see what the future holds for Rocket Lab's method in the future of spaceflight? Let us know in the comments below, and if you want to watch more of our amazing videos, then stay tuned.